for those of you who are just dialing in, this is the 51st Open Chain webinar. Uh, and this time we're going to be doing clearly defined the project uh, which we've briefly talked about before and which helps us understand what software is out there, what it is, and what that means for us. Now, as always, this webinar and all of the Open Chain meetings are under the Linux Foundation antitrust policy. You'll find the full policy on our website. And if you're from a Linux Foundation member company, you can direct questions to our council, Andy Updegrove. But without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Nick Vidal, who's going to present on behalf of OSI on the Clearly Defined Project. I'm sure he's going to go into detail of why it's at OSI now and what's happening next. But just as a brief introduction, Nick has been deeply involved in open source on the governance side and community building side for many years. So with his engagement around Clearly Defined, we now have an interesting proposition of increased community engagement and potentially scaling. So I thought it's, it's a good time for us to have this webinar and I'm very grateful that Nick is here. I'm also very grateful for the people I'm seeing dialing in. I just saw Ninjoji-san and Kobota-san dial in from Japan, uh, where it is a crazy late time of the day. So obviously, Nick, you've hit a nerve. People are interested. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm going to hand over to you to justify their interest and explain exactly what's going on and why it matters. Mm -hmm. Well, Shane, thank you so much for such kind introduction. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. And uh, I just joined the website two months ago and uh, as a community manager for Clearly Define. I'll be sharing some slides with you uh, later. Uh, I'll be sharing this also over the, the mailing list and uh, all other channels from Open Chain. And so, uh, uh, as Shane mentioned, Clearly Define is part of the OSI, the Open Source Initiative, and it's a really interesting project uh, with a lot of relevance, especially right now with s bombs uh, and uh, open source compliance and security. So let's jump right in. So uh, let me start out with the mission of Clearly Define. And this is actually something new that we're still drafting. There's an older mission, but the, the mission of Clearly Defined is to create a global database of licensing metadata for every open source, source software components ever published. So this is a, quite a, a bold mission, uh, especially because we want to cover every open source components and have accurate Licensing metadata, but that's our mission. That that's what we want want to accomplish, and we can only accomplish this with the help from everyone, uh, from individuals and from companies and partners like OpenChain. Uh, so, what's the problem? Uh, we have seen in recent years, especially uh, after Log4j and the executive order from the White House and other in initiatives to really have as bombs or software build materials everywhere, both for compliance reasons and for security reasons. And this is going to be a really great challenge for organizations, especially to generate those at scale for every stage on the supply chain, for every build, for every release. This is a really huge problem. And uh, it's challenging navigating this uh, today. Also, one additional uh, issue is that there might be some missing or wrongly identified licensing metadata and if, uh, uh, at a components. And if we have multiple organizations that are using that components, everyone will have to fix that over and over again. It just seems like a waste of, of time and effort, right? So a solution to that is to uh, 
This is where Clinic Find comes in. It should serve as a cache copy of licensing metadata for every component through a simple API call, and also allow organizations to contribute back. So you don't have to have a hundred organizations fixing the same issue, the, the same uh, wrongly identified metadata or missing metadata. It takes just one company to fix that, and they can uh, contribute back, and every other company, the other 99 companies, will be able to get them. So this is, uh, this is the goal is to create a, a database that's accurate for the benefit of all, for the benefit of the common, right? So here are some ways that we want to bring clarity to open source uh, licenses and how uh, you can use and contribute as well. So we have six ways here that we have outlined. So the first one is about using data. How can I use this? Uh, there's a simple API where you, uh, you can actually see the link here uh, the several ways that you can uh, interface with this API. You can uh, call definitions, creations, harvest, attachments, and notices. So just one example, uh, if I want to access uh, licensing metadata of this uh, package here uh, on NPM, this is how I would call the API. And I'm going to attempt to share my screen as well. So just a second. And I'm going to actually share my terminal. And here it is. And so here is how I can call the API. Right now, if you if you want to try, uh, you just open a command line, and here I'm going to uh, try to fetch the metadata from log4j, uh, this particular version, 1.2.17, and you bring this data here. And so I put this as a JSON file, and so basically you have uh, the files here with their hashes. And finally, at the end, we have, so there are a lot of files. Let me scroll down. And at the end of this file, we have, um, let me just check. We have uh, the release dates, the source location, the provider. So this is uh, on Maven, right? Uh, we have the virtual number and we have, we should also have the lessons information. So here it's, let me just check. There's a lot of data here to navigate. So I think it's Apache. Let me search for that. Yep, here it is. Apache, oops, Apache, uh, so that's it. And as you can see, it's very simple. Let me go back to the slides. It's a lot of information, so my apologies for trying to, to find the right uh, data. And so you can actually see what are the, uh, the different uh, calls that you can uh, access. And so that's one way to benefit from this. Also, if there's any missing data, uh, licensing metadata, you can actually correct that. So for example, uh, if we want to update it, uh, or we have a license attached here and it's not correct, we can fix that. You can also contribute data using the user interface. So if you go to cleardefined.io, there's a way for you to interact there using the user interface in a very friendly way. And here, for example, uh, we are declaring MIT classes. 
And of course, everything that we do is open source. So you can actually uh, look at our GitHub accounts, uh, clearly find and see all the all the repos that we have. And of course, we accept uh, pull requests and any uh, other types of contributions. And there are a lot of people who have contributed. So we definitely welcome contributions. And uh, if there's a component, uh, a software package that you like to add to our harvest, you can actually you can do that as well. And so right now uh, we have thirty thousand, sorry, uh, thirty million definitions across different repositories. And of course, uh, the last way that you can contribute is by adopting best practices using OpenChain uh, as a reference and other tools as well. So we can see here clearly defined, uh, SW360, uh, scan codes, OSID, and other uh, technologies as well, and best practices. Uh, so what's next? So I've been with the OSI as the community manager for two months right now. And I've been talking with the community uh, about different aspects of how we can make clear define better. And so these are three aspects that the community has requested. So make a, a better open governance model, more access to data and open collaboration. So right now we're in the process of establishing an open governance structure, and we're happy to have people uh, who would like to become leaders uh, at Clearly Defined and really uh, steer uh, the, the conversations there and make Clearly Defined better and to suit the community. So I have this uh, article on LinkedIn. If you want to check, I'll, I'll be sharing this uh, right now on our chats. So just a second. Let me try to find the chat. All right, here it is. And if you want to read that through, th uh, this is an explanation of, of why we are proposing a change to the charter and how, what are the changes and I try to be uh, as sensible as possible and we're collecting feedback uh, on this. So it's just a draft. Also, uh, one of the requests by the community is open data, like raw scan results, regular data exports, metadata from releases. We have to be careful about open data because sometimes we have uh, sensitive information like IP addresses from people who were looking uh, up the, uh, those information. So we have to uh, make this confidential, but we also want to work toward, towards providing uh, access uh, as much as possible to, to the data, right? So people can use that. And finally, uh, working together with other uh, projects, uh, other communities, uh, really embracing open collaboration. Uh, so working together with open chain, the ORT community, which is, uh, I was able to travel to Berlin to, their, to the first ORT community day and hear uh, their feedback and all other projects here that are listed uh, like um, the Eclipse Foundation, the Software Heritage uh, uh, and several other Linux Foundation events, uh, Linux Foundation projects, uh, SPDX, uh, also OWASP, uh, the cyclone like DX, and so many more. So uh, what's so let's let's have some closing remarks here. It's going to be to be really challenging for us to uh, reach a point where organizations or every organization is going to have S bombs everywhere, and we're going to really help secure the open source supply chain. This is a big challenge for everyone, but there's so many benefits. And in Berlin, I went to a conference, a wonderful conference called Pause Backstage. And there I met Claire uh, from the Inner Source uh, Foundation. And she gave a very good talk about our lizard brains and how 
we can incentivize everyone to collaborate and to work together. So if you want to read the article here uh, and also look at, uh, at her uh, keynotes there, it was it's really worth it. And I'm going to be sharing this over chat. And so uh, our goal here is to really allow everyone to work together, collaborate to solve this problem and to help everyone make the, uh, the open source supply chain more secure. And so here's the link. And with that, I would like to invite you to join ClearDefy at cleardefy.io. And please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, that's my personal email, my professional email. And I'm glad to answer any questions. And I really appreciate your time. Nick, thank you. Uh, the first question I'm going to pull straight from the chat. Holger mm -hmm. asked, what format is the data? Is it SPDX? Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, it's it's different from SPDX or Cyclone, uh, as you can see from, from the formats here. So let me share this again. It's not exactly uh, an ASPOM format, but you but by using this data you can uh, generate an ASPOM. So let me see if I can share it here again. While you're pulling that up, I'll just let everyone know that I've uh, enabled the ability for people to unmute themselves as well as chat, so you can jump in with questions. Yes, so as you can see here, it's a different format. Uh, you have a list of files and their hash, and you have uh, uh, information, uh, whether it's uh, well described or not, uh, what, what's the source location, uh, what's the last known? Excuse me, guys. Uh, Sorry. Just number. Yes. So uh, it's it's not SPDX or site. And we want to work together with uh, those formats, of course. So we, let's dig into that a little more. And apologies, everyone, for sneezing a minute ago. <laughs> Um, let's dig into that a little more. We just had a question where Steve was uh, asking in the chat, could you clarify what you mean by harvest as in add a harvest? So what specifically does that mean? It's a new term for us. That's a wonderful question. So let me, let me pull the clear defined website. And here you have, let's wait for it. And here we have a lot of components uh, that are available. And sometimes you want to look up a component that is not part of the harvest. And so you can actually make a request and you can say- I, I think we're seeing the wrong screen. Oh, are you? We're seeing your uh, terminal window. Oh, okay. So let me share my tab. My, my tab. Uh, Thank you for pointing that out. There are too, too many tabs and too many terminals open. So, oh, here it is. Can you see now? Yes, yes I can see the browser. Oh, wonderful. Yes, perfect. So here are several components that we have uh, that are on clearly defined right now. We have some stats. Right now, we have uh, 31 million total definitions across these different uh, package managers. Um, so uh, JavaScript, Python, um, Java, uh, C++, and so forth. And sometimes when you have, you want to have to look at a, uh, a components, and if it's not there, this component it's not there you can actually request for it to be harvested so you can enter i don't know uh, let's enter whatever <laughs> and you can make a request and uh, this is going to we're going to fetch that data and look at it and anal analyze the components so yeah that's it 
I have a, a related question. Um, so this goes back to Holgar's uh, question about the format of data. Why, why is it not a, a format like SPDX or Cyclo? Now, this isn't a, a negative comment. It's just a question of why, why isn't it an existing format? What's, what's the rationale behind that? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So because the project existed five years ago, and I'm not sure how much sure uh, SPDX and Cyclone were at that time. I think it serves a different purpose, but uh, I think we should uh, uh, try to work together with SPDX and Cyclone as much as possible and make it really friendly. So I think, the, yeah, the, the main reason is uh, it was uh, five years ago and it serves a different purpose, I guess. But we can certainly review that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think it's one of those things where, um, <laughs> you know, five years ago, I think I'm not even sure Cyclone existed. I know SPDX did, but it, a yeah. lot of stuff has been happening since then and people are co converging and so on. So, you know, the, ultimately, the more interconnected we get, the better, but it's natural that there's plenty of options on the table and there's plenty of discussions about how we manage this. The most important thing is that we have open access to all of these things so we can convert, which we do have. Uh, Steve Crawford had a question. He says, who's verifying the metadata and how trustworthy is it? When we were developing yes. SPDX, we had debates galore about how the metadata should be harvested, used, and how definitive the data was. A lot of code mm -hmm. NPM, for example, identifies as MIT, but in truth can have other copyrights or blended licenses in the code. That's actually a very good question. So uh, right now, uh, so uh, as you mentioned before, uh, this project was originally from Microsoft and they donated to the OSI, but Microsoft is still uh, leading the way in terms of uh, providing the infrastructure, harvesting this data, uh, doing the scans, and uh, they have uh, uh, a way to attribute uh, scores for those uh, components as well. So mostly this has been done by Microsoft, and by trying to create a more open uh, governance model, we want to bring other companies uh, to the table as well and make sure that we, we have uh, something more uh, balanced. But everything that, that's done is done in the open. So you can actually uh, see everything uh, on, on GitHub and how uh, we're, we're fetching the data, how uh, when there is a change, for example, somebody found a missing uh, licensing data, uh, this person actually has to do a pull request to the original project to fix that. And you can see this uh, through, through GitHub. So it's very transparent, but we certainly can make it better. That's a, a really good point. Um, and this, this data quality thing, it sounds like it's a job for all of us to help with. Now we've got more questions mm -hmm. in. You're hitting a nerve. Lots of people excited. <laughs> uh, Steve, a different Steve this time, our, our good old friend Steve Kilbane from Analog. Does the component metadata include any information about a package's dependencies? And his second question is, can you talk about component naming? As I understand it, clearly defined as naming uh, components through PURLs. Yes, uh, those are very good questions. So yes, we're looking at, at dependencies, and right now we're working towards adopting the software heritage uh, identification uh, because th this is a a, a common issue, a, a common problem, and really essential. Right, you have to know what's the the components and. Uh, so we're going to be adopting the software heritage identification. And I just wanted to remind everyone that I'm two months in, so I might not be able to uh, answer the, the questions perfectly, so I'm trying my best. And you can always reach out to me as well, and I'll research about those questions and get back to you as well. <laughs> 
That's good. Um, okay. Uh, so I guess one thing that we would put as a request for coming back is the component metadata having any information about dependencies. So it'd be great if, if you could dig into that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yari has a question. Yeah. Um, what if there are conflicting curations? So one says BSD3 and the other says CDDL. Uh, that's a good question as well. So uh, when you make a pull request, uh, you have to have uh, at least two people agreeing uh, that that's the, the, that's the curation process, right? Agreeing with those changes. So if, there, uh, if there's a disagreement, there must be a way to solve that uh, between those people who are involved. And let me try to pull out, this is actually part of our, our websites. Uh, we have, as part of our documentation, we have a process of under curated data and how this is ordered. So there's a process, there's a pull request, and they can actually have a voting of uh, to try to solve uh, any issues that we might have. Yeah, so. Uh, I think it, uh, we can also work uh, to, to make this process more transparent as well. All righty. Uh, we have some comments, a whole bunch of comments. Ninjoji-san, he says, <laughs> my question is yeah. the Steve's. Um, is the curated data provided by clearly defined, identified by the clearly defined community is there any consent from the original open source copyright holders to the curated data? So this is asking about the provenance of it. Uh, you know, who, who said that this data is curated? Yes, so uh, let me pull, pull this, uh, the GitHub accounts of clear define. And so one of the repositories is the curated data. And when somebody proposes a change, they do a pull request on that. Um, so let's just pick this one here. And they make a proposal to, for, for example, on this one here, they're, they're adding an MIT license. And here we have a, a resolution and a dis description. So we try to work this out and actually contribute this pull request to the original projects where the maintainers can accept or not this pull request to make each project more clearly defined in terms of their license information. So if the original maintainers, if they accept this pull request, then that solves. Otherwise, uh, we also provide this information through the API, and but, uh, it's fully transparent. You, you can see here how this is going and how it was identified. I hope that clarifies the question. <laughs> Uh, we have some more questions in here. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, there must be a clear way to get to the source code in the tool and manually inspect the actual test to determine what is correct. How can there be a difference between Joe and Sally reading the same text? Um, Chris, are you talking about the initial scanning and so on? Uh, in general or specifically about clearly defined? I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh, and there's a second one from Chris. Who makes a suggestion on the license? Is someone on the software dev team that owns the software? Uh, yes. No, sir. Hey, Chris. Those are kind of stream of consciousness as you're showing the screen here, questions. But the first one has to do 
which when you come up with a report and it says that the licenses could be BSD or it could be the CDDL. Um, and so you said that the people need to vote on it to see which one is right. And that's absolutely not correct. In my opinion, if you have access to the source code and you can actually look at the license that's in the source code, there should be no discussion. It's either A or B. There's no voting. I wouldn't think. Uh, so I I do I do believe there's a voting process. Uh, if there's if there's uh, like if it's not clear what's the license, and uh, I think that's part of the documentation as well. Uh, let me try to find it here. So just to clarify here, and I could be wrong, mm -hmm. Nick. It sounds like this polling process is when something is pretty weird and there's no immediate way to determine what the license is in play. So perhaps conflicting license information or similar. So I mean, shorthand here, not to be overly critical, but it could be like code that's not properly curated, right? Yeah, so let me just read a part of the documentation here. Oh, we have just two things in here in the in the chat before you do that. Yari says, I've okay. seen several yeah. times that top level license file licenses are not the same. So there's two top level licenses that are contradict. And Steve Cropper mm -hmm. notes, there isn't always an A or B with open source, big debate in SPDX. It could also be that licenses mm -hmm. are A and B. And then Yari notes licenses can change between versions too. Okay, so uh, anyway, Nick, over to you about what actually happens and clearly defined. Yeah, so I'm actually uh, reading uh, uh, here the documentation and it says that curators must review, discuss, and come to agreement together and in the open. Uh, curators are not meant to merge their own pull requests. All proposed curations must be reviewed by some other person in the community and merged by someone else other than the proposer. So uh, there are cases where, uh, uh, as you mentioned, there's disagreements of uh, what's the actual license and they must actually reference that and explain why that's the case. And if there's like a dispute, uh, people cannot clearly identify uh, what's the license for uh, a project or for a components, uh, they must dis discuss this openly and there might be even having a vote uh, at the end at this. Um, this is something that I'm also learning, um, but uh, th that's how I view it right now. And I I'm sure there are a lot of people who have more practice, uh, real practice around this. So I I'm happy uh, to be corrected. I, I might be wrong as well. But at least this is what the documentation say. Chris, um, to your point, you know, I think you you touched on something quite important that, you know, if the software is to be usable for a lot of workflows, you have to know what it is. And if it's unclear, then the software might be unusable in the context. So, I suppose this leads to a second note that. Um, Bowling and you know curation from third parties, not the original licensor, could still introduce doubt, which I guess is almost an inevitability in some areas of open source. But it's also something that we have to be cognizant of. You know, it's perfectly valid for a company to say if we can't clearly identify the code license here, if we're doing a poll mm -hmm. from a third party here, it's toxic to us. We won't touch it. And that's valid stance. Uh, and in some industries, I think that's probably a necessary stance. Though in others, I guess the polling happens. It's like, well, the odds are it's this. We'll run with it this way. Oh, Holger has an interesting comment. If someone, an individual or a company, acknowledges the correctness or flags an error within the package, can this somehow be made public or even part of the data set? Okay, in case of error, an issue will be opened at GitHub, but someone else needs to look there in order to see it, and otherwise we'll just consume a bad data set. Uh, in case of consuming bad data, 
Uh, this could mean I trusted the data and someone else might trust it more because I already consumed it. Um, so th this is an interesting point from Holliger that unless the data is corrected, people could end up with trust flows. And then, you know, because company A trusted it, I'll trust it too. And then we get down the chain and it's like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is a big issue. Uh, we have to try to make this as accurate as possible. Uh, and of course the data might, might be wrong. Uh, since we're talking about people here as well, uh, people can introduce wrong data as well. And this is a really good discussion to have and how to solve this. I think it's an open question. Uh, it really takes a community to solve this uh, and working together as much as possible. Uh, for example, somebody asked about uh, having access to the raw data. This also is important so you can actually see what's happening, how was that data fetched and discovered and maybe there, there was a, an issue around that as well. So these are very good questions. And I don't think there, uh, anyone has a solution to that, but working together, we can uh, arrive at a, uh, the best solution possible. Now yeah. we have, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, do, that, do I have a misconception? Is clearly defined only looking at the top level license of the package? No, uh, I, th I think it, it's. Uh, I believe it's the whole dependencies. So is it a deep level scan of all, all the possible licenses in, in the search code? I believe so. Uh, does anyone here uh, in the audience knows better? Or can answer this question? I guess what we'll do is we'll throw this question to you um, for follow-up, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. <laughs> we so have I'm, really happy with, I'm, I'm really happy with the questions. Um, two months in, and I'm still learning, but these are really some really great questions and something, something that I have to look uh, more carefully, and I'll try to provide a, a, an answer as best no, as possible. No, that's fantastic. I mean, that's the whole reason we have these webinars, to yeah. you know, share notes. <laughs> we have a, another question in from Kubota-san, which is, I thought clearly defined returns the so-called declared license of open source packages and not the concluded license is that wrong and then Stephen Kilbane said surely the point of clearly defined is that declared license isn't sufficient okay so I'm not sure if the answer is at hand now or if it's a comeback later but it's the question is you know does yes. clearly so, define do declared license or concluded license as it's data yeah we really believe in making upstream as accurate as possible so if we fix a, any licensing metadata issue uh, we make a pull request to the original project so that they can have this fix and this propagates. Uh, so while, uh, yes, we do provide information about the, the licensing, uh, really the original projects should have that data as accurate as possible. And I will try to upstream that as much as possible. Yeah. I ideally the declared license should be sufficient. But often oftentimes that's not the case. No, because Yari is evil, he said what we've not talked about snippets. <laughs> let's let's not talk about snippets, Yari. Forget snippets. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris, you had something. My apologies. No, I was yes. just so regarding uh, snippets. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello, uh, I'm oh, Sally here. Can you mm -hmm. all hear me? Hello. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So about Hari's latest question, uh, we have not talked about snippets. Uh, what I feel is uh, snippets are generally taken from some website, for example, stock over stack overflow or so on, or they are part of some larger components. Or let's say that some interns or uh, some uh, some uh, employee of an of, of an organization writes that code and later on leaves the company, but it is still take, it is still part of the company's code. So my opinion is snippets should not be part of clearly defined. It should be, it is best left for the organizations or the users to find their origins and the, the licenses of those snippets. But again, it's just my opinion. Yeah, I think I should I would agree with that as well. Yeah, that from having looked at open source software for more than 20 years now, I can say that making the organizations responsible for finding the origin of snippets and the licenses that go with them has caused innumerable hours of wasted time when the development team, when they took that snippet and copied it in there, could have been better served by bringing the license and copyright with it. So, it, you know, I think there's there's some pluses and minuses to what you're suggesting there about making it the responsibility of the receiving board. Um, I'm sorry, actually, I did not understand your accent. But uh, I would say that, uh, I mean, I'll just give an example. I once came, I, I have worked as an OSS license compliance expert for last 12 years. So I once came across a small code snippet that uh, one of the commercial tools was showing as taken from one person one single person and I could see it on his own website also. And then I was surprised at why it, it has come in that company's uh, company source code. And then later on, I found out a lot of digging I had to do. And I found out that this person was actually an intern in that company. And th that, and he, he had written that code when he was working with that company. And later on, he moved and he built up his own website and whatnot. And that time, he covered that code under some, some license, not very stringent, not like GPL or anything, but he did that. So that is why I felt like it's better for snippets to be checked by the organizations. But of course, there can be more point of views about this. And so we we don't even got started with AI snippets as well, right? Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about so AI are, now. Do we want to enter that discussion? <laughs> Actually, that brings up a very interesting point. Uh, we will be doing AI uh, in a future webinar. Uh, so that is coming. Uh, I think in June, I was just talking with GTC Law and they said they're cooking some cool stuff. Uh, so everyone can just like, take blood pressure pills until June. <laughs> and, and then we'll um, we're, we're actually running low on time, but we've had some good comments here um in the in the chat uh one is steve cropper the spdx packaging discussion is key here as the only way you can validate a code assessment is if it is packed with the original code base and sealed with a signature this is where declared and concluded is an issue holger ha has a note which got a thumbs up from someone i would expect i would think and expect the clearly defined not only provides declared and identified license, um, concluded licenses with the consumer of the metadata as it may widely vary depending on the organization's legal interpretation. Okay, that's a good point. And Stephen, related to this, Steve Kilbane, what level of granularity is the data stored in? Uh, does it record licenses at a file level or component level? And then Halio to cause chaos decided to bring in AI again. <laughs> AI plus package manager, interesting discussion on Slack, which is very cool. Uh, so there's some cool links there if you want to go down the AI rabbit hole. 
But let, let's pull back to Steve Kilbane. What level of granularity is the data stored in? Is it recording licenses at a file level, or component, or package level? Yeah, those are, are very good questions. I so I have to study more to answer those questions. And Shane, I do have a question for you. Uh, is the chat history uh, available, or would you make it available so I can uh, look at them? and do some research and get back to you? That's such and a good question. The, and to the community, yeah. Um, I will try to work out a, sa a way to save this thing. <laughs> I have uh, no right. idea how to do it, but I'll try. I'm trying to take a screenshot of the questions, but there's so many, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, Helio has got some really cool stuff on the AI. Yeah, um, and then for those who are curious, and this is a digression and it's a rabbit hole and so on and so forth. But for those who are curious about AI going nuts, uh, we're gonna be promoting this tomorrow or today. Um, one of our German community, uh, Andreas over at Bitsy, who's on this call, just published an amazing blog post where talking with ChatGPT and asking it about licenses, it went and hallucinated licenses in China with names of licenses, organizations that supposedly wrote them, and completely imaginary rationale. It got one right <laughs> yeah. with Milan, but the rest it just made up out of thin air. Um, so, you know, AI <laughs> has all kinds of implications for, for licensing, not just uh, analyzing it, but sometimes creating license fiction if you so well yeah, um, it is crazy right so uh, we'll be promoting that blog post and like i said we will come back to ai we will be addressing this and uh, what helio has put in the chat some of those links is a good place to get started kubota san mm -hmm. has also put in a link but uh we, i mean we have some takeaways from this call nick which is you know there's a few details which came in on asking mm -hmm. for clarification so maybe we can swing back in you know a few weeks or a month and do an update if that's okay with just a few more notes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. That'll be really so, cool. Yeah, thank you, Shane. Yeah, thank you, Shane, for receiving me. Thank you, everyone, for your questions and for your interest. This is really important. And uh, as a community manager, I'm always trying to learn a bit more about our community. Uh, what are your needs and your desires? And I'm here to, to serve you as best as possible. So thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate it. Nick, thank you. And I want to thank everyone in the audience for some great questions and feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of those collaborative areas where we're kicking the tires on how it's approached, how it's done, and how we can make it better. Uh, if, if we don't ask the questions, we don't get better stuff. So you're helping to make shiny, mm -hmm. nicer toys for the entire ecosystem. Please have a wonderful day and take care all. Thank you so much, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day.